Hello, friends, and welcome to ITSL Game of the Week here on Action Round Zero. With Zima Whip Pesdersky on the mic and uh, Harib Flores on production, I'm Justin Abramson. We're so glad you could join us for today's contest out of the Asia Pacific Conference. Uh, should be a barn burner as Tiong Shong takes on Chrome Chen. Tiong's a relative newcomer in the Twilight Struggle community, but he took the OTSL by storm earlier this year, winning a difficult division, making it all the way to the quarterfinals. He's been no slouch in the ITSL either, with a 6-2 and two record, good for second in his division and seventh in the conference. And I personally am quite pleased to have drafted him to my fantasy team. Uh, Chrome, however, is having an even better campaign. He's ranked in the top 10 worldwide, and if the season ended today, his 8-1 and record would be good enough for the number one overall seed in an absolutely loaded Asia-Pacific conference. And then again, if the season ended today, people would be surprised. There's a lot of twilight struggle left. And the clock just struck midnight in Beijing, so we're grateful to both players for joining us today, despite the late hour. And wherever you are in the world, and whatever time it is for you, we thank you as well for tuning in as these two elite Chinese players go head-to-head -head on Twilight Struggle's biggest stage. With that, I'd like to turn to Zima Witt. Zima Witt looks like the, the game has already started. Uh, what can you tell us about these two players? Well, I did some basic um, in research about them. Chrome Chan did uh, great last season, went 16-3 and three in uh, the very difficult then joint Asia and America's conference. And eventually he fell, I think, in the quarterfinals to Ken C who then lost to Peter Zhao himself, the best player of the group stage. Uh, Kian Zhang, I think, is uh, new to ITSL this season, his first attempt to join us, and doing quite well, quite well so far. Okay, and an interesting start amidst the classic Middle East uh, headline versus Vietnam Rolls plus an immediate Asia scoring. Uh, usually players tend to get a little bit greedy just trying to get talent uh, Laos Cambodia first uh, but here uh, he decided to cash his uh, score immediately yeah it's often uh, tempting to try and make that aggressive play uh, get that greedy play but uh, he's just wanted to cash in five points turn that uh, turn that victory point counter red and you see Chrome now trying for a uh, Italy coup and failing rolling a one so that's gonna uh, make things a little bit more difficult in Europe which is at this point the only unscored region in the early war also he got burned uh, because of his well let's say greed because he had to activate NATO at uh, AR1 uh, play was Warsaw Pact uh, so okay maybe if he wanted to spread from Vietnam NATO wouldn't be the card of choice to do that but an immediate coup maybe of Iran or Italy would have spared him that trouble at least and now hmm. now his situation is not great Europe is dominated Middle East is good yes yes um, so the US looking much uh, much better here in Europe and already having scored four points in the Middle East and uh, gotten out of Lebanon and Iran as well. So he's been, able, excuse me, gotten out of Israel and Iran. So I've been able to spread. And then he's just going to, looks like, go for a single op to fix Italy and maintain that Europe domination. I bet he's thinking about going to Malaysia as well. But, oh, just like that. Right, because okay. Soviets now have to coup again in order to protect Vietnam from a counter coup so it will be Pakistan or maybe Panama with Asia being scored it makes more sense than usual yeah I like getting into India there um, from the US perspective and don't need to take Thailand immediately because uh, Cheong did not step into Malaysia is that this surprised me I would expect he do that then Soviets don't coup but take Thailand uh, take Laos I assume and USA gets a cheap coup at least out of that whereas now um, there will be no easy targets I expect a coup in Pakistan and then finally a coup in Panama unless USA decides to drop DEFCON uh, in Iraq Yes, and I, sorry, I, I messed up the, made a mistake there with the player's name. It's Chrome here who is playing the U.S. and uh, Cheong who is playing 
the USSR. Oh, right, um, indeed. Yes. I am, uh, I'm not used to, it's my fault there, um, I am not used to the uh, dual setup where we can see both players' hands. I love that, uh, but it, it confused me momentarily, so I'm sorry about that, folks. And uh, Cheong there are going to event, uh, oh. capture Nazis, pick up a couple of VPs, and get ahead on the space race. That's Okay, that's very Chinese and w uh, something I very much don't agree with. What the hell? Surely he's not going to space now. I mean, come on, it's DEFCON 4 and there's Vietnam alone and you don't have Milops. Yeah, there's a lot to do on this board. Uh, Cheong with not much in the way of ops. Uh, and so he does coup Vietnam, flips Vietnam over to the U.S. side. And yeah, Cheong with NORAD, which I can't imagine he would be willing to event, plus Romanian abdication, Korean war and blockade. And he's going to go with the coup back with his bonus and roll a three just enough to maintain access there. Uh, obviously, rolling a two there would have been a disaster. And we're going to see a coup back. Sure, that's great. Use of one repeat, oh, and he rolls a six. Nice. Besides, big roll of six. To even kick if the out Soviets, the USSR. yes, a roll high. I mean, having a two or a five in Vietnam doesn't really matter. No difference there. Uh, but eliminating the opponent out of the sub region entirely, that's huge. I am surprised that uh, Chiang uh, allowed that. Just going for a sort of greedy uh, space attempt. Oh, not attempt. And uh, now, not um, yes. On a, uh, now I miss on the coup back, which leaves the U.S. in there. You think you might see a battleground coup here, I, I would think, to lower DEFCON and protect Vietnam. But also, he used blockade for that coup. And so, it looks like Chrome's going to be able to hold decal uh, through to turn three. Or perhaps destall if he draws it uh, with blockade gone. Yeah, oh, no. Think... Never mind. I, yeah, I, I kind of expected that. Since there is a significant chance he draws destall next turn. And... A, he imp improves the chance of him doing that by getting rid of all of his cards, and B, makes sure that uh, he doesn't have two problem cards, or even more, on turn two. Because so yeah, far, uh, we haven't seen anything. Uh, no De Gaulle, Suez, Socialists, Distal. Only Vietnam no. Revolts, which is easily playable by the USA. No, we haven't seen those cards, and Italy's still sitting at two, and Europe the only score, un unscored region, so socialist governments could be uh, a major problem here for the USA. Okay, so Korean War, I'm just going to go ahead and fill up a rocket. Presence kind in the Middle of East, unnecessary. not going to Korea. Yes, with Milly scored, I would have done that definitely. Okay, expect now a strong boost of Europe, like two Italy, one France. Uh, though, okay, DEFCON is at three, so at DEFCON four, hmm. That's interesting, actually. I expect the Soviets might go for another coup of... What? Really? Just going to boost the Italy by boost Italy up by one. Yeah, Couldn't I don't like protect it. Protect against socialist governments. I it's like getting into Egypt, but it's important to protect Europe. And as, you, as you've been saying, Zima, with uh, DEFCON is at four, so uh, we could see a big Vietnam coup, could see a Pakistan coup next turn. And uh, Chrome does indeed draw a socialist government, so he's got to be breathing a little bit of a sigh of relief there. Uh, let's see what Chiang draws. Sure, and, he well, draws he's the gonna factors, have... yeah, which is huge good. here also. Since yep. whatever, okay, unless I'm against Europe scoring, which is not unlikely. <laughs> Uh, but no Europe for Xiang. No Europe, so Europe's going to be coming out turn three. No De Gaulle either, so... He has Suez uh, and the Purge, so one of these cards should be the headline, expect. expect. Yeah. Arab-Israeli war doesn't really make sense against this Israel. No, and Suez is kind of weak with no access to France here for Xiang. True, but it, it does something at least. Maybe yes. it forces your opponent to spend some time repairing Europe after whatever damage you do on AR-1. Yes, that is true. Yeah, Suez so you is. are right. You are right. He's going to go with Suez. Uh, obviously, that's going to get defectored, but certainly uh, saves the saves the one op of of purge. Uh, so keeps the four op in hand uh, for his AR one coup. Do you think we're going to see Vietnam coup here? Do you think we see a Pakistan coup? What do you What do you think, Zimo? Probably Vietnam. I would gamble on that because even if you lose the gamble, uh, then you can just rinse and repeat, go somewhere else. With Pakistan, Asia is scored in the Pakistani wars unaccounted for. I would be afraid to do that. 
Yeah, I like the. Okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, indeed, Chrome does have uh, Indo Pak in his hand. So a big China card coup of Pakistan could be a problem, even if he rolls big. Yeah, I like the coup of Vietnam here. Gets you access to Thailand. Oh, no. Nope, okay. We're not, that's not so what we're going to see. No. Okay, that's interesting. All right. Okay, yeah, so he's Mark. gonna take Europe, do- uh, take away Europe domination, rather. Yeah, I cl- um, that's clever. I just noticed due to poor resolution, he has Marshall Plan, right? So it is in his interest to clog all the two stops in Europe, including Canada, which lacks to influence. And when he does that, he play Marshall possibly later uh, for a very little price. So what to do now? Right, probably that. Whoa. Chrome is going to respond. Really? Going to go into Thailand. So, okay, like do you that. think we see a big, big old China card coup of Thailand here on AR2? That's. Chrome is inviting that. Juice. Yes, I wouldn't do that. I would go to Malaysia, maybe. So, in case there's a huge coup in Vietnam. Here we go. But now he needs a tree. Oh, Bloody. and he misses the uh, No, okay. Okay, huge, huge bad luck for uh, Xiang. Devastating. That's Even his a, second oh, yeah. row of one in a very important battleground. I wrote one in Italy, now I wrote one in Thailand. Yeah, that's a that's a bad miss because even a two there, which doesn't take Thailand, you force Chrome to take Thailand back, and then you get another coup. Now he doesn't have to worry about that. Yeah, pretty awful. Okay, I was bad. wondering why it's not eventing that can cover. He has, okay, maybe he's worried about um, Distal in Soviet hand, but still, with the Pakistani war in hand. Other than Fidel, of course. Right, I expect now a coup in Panama just to deny Milops. Yeah, but even that's not going to work because Chrome's got the IP war. Yeah, it really sucks. For him, so far in this game, Chiang is going to find himself well behind in all one, the early War uh, and two. another miss on the coup. Awful, just awful. Okay, time to spread in Africa, of course. So, what about the hold card? I expect he will hold socialists. Although there's something to be said about Nasser, but just the priv- privilege of not having to boost Europe is pretty great. Yeah, especially with Italy at only three. De Gaulle still to come out. I, I like, and the Middle East looks pretty healthy for, for the U.S. so far. I'd be fine. I think I'd be fine giving up Nasser for the privilege of holding socialist, even though you don't necessarily need to with De Gaulle gone. I uh, still think it's very helpful. Yeah, sure. Especially with Europe gone. Oh, sorry, gone. Not accounted for the opposite of that. Right. Cambridge 5 was uh, easily could have been played here since if you're not playing Europe... Obviously, you don't have Europe, so might as well play Cambridge. But so far, triple domination for the USA, despite a Soviet lead on victory points. (laughs) Yeah, a Soviet lead on victory points and that early Vietnam play, and just some bad coup rules there early. Awful. Okay, to Canada once a year. Correct. Followed by in the Pakistani war. Although, I'm curious, what will he do after... Xiang takes Turkey, which is kind of obvious right now. Although yeah, he has a problem. Sense. Yeah, we we'll have to use Marshall for it, I think, because you don't play NORAT with Canada already taken. And independent the... Reds is a problem for Yeah, that kind well. of defeats the purpose. He could take a breeder to space, but keeping out the pressure makes sense here. Marshall to Bulgaria and Turkey, for example. Well, it's a rare game when you see the Soviets fill up all those <laughs> all those Eastern European battlegrounds. Generally, an ineffective use of ops, but in this case, True. Chiang has no access, so uh, I, so preventing Europe domination probably a pretty pretty safe play. Right, since he gained literally zero access since the beginning of the game, in current state of the board, he's nowhere. He He'll, desperately needs to draw D-stall or, or redraw D-call here on, uh, on turn three. He's going to sure. be in big trouble in the mid-war regions. He's already in big trouble in the early war regions. Well, want to improve his situation in Africa very much. Okay, he goes for Truman first. 
Not sure I like that. I mean, Bulgaria influence could be useful for setting up a draw in Europe. Not like you have better things to do, after all. Are, do you think he might be thinking about a West Germany poke eventually? Um, not, not, I guess not with, with the cards what? he has in hand. That, that doesn't problem. really make any sense. Yeah. What? What? Really? Ooh, getting rid of socialist. I, I would have thought that'd be a good one to hold. Also, you really want to use the Pakistani war for the event, so why not now and decide later? Yeah, that was the move into South Korea was a good one, but not one that required an immediate response. I would have liked to see Indo Pak right away. The, get your you mill ops, then you have a little bit a little bit of freedom at least with that one op on the end of the turn. Exactly. The one thing I'm considering he might have gone through his head was that he was worried exactly about the West Germany push and decided to hold at least a uh, two op to stop that. Well, the other two, neither is a one op, socialist governance doesn't really help with that push. So that was one uh, one yeah. thing that would uh, convince him to uh, follow that route. Yeah, socialist yeah. government's obviously a, essentially a zero op card because you can't afford to allow any of those ops to go unrepaired. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, it gets it, it gets it out, and now it's AR6 and a lot of white here in Chiang's hand. Independent reds you don't want to play. Marshall you, you could play, fill up Turkey, uh, and then... You know, I guess maybe you could do the West Germany poke or uh, maybe go into Saudi Arabia fill and fin or finish up filling South Korea. Um, and then NORAD obviously don't want to play either with Canada already full. Uh, but spacing here kind of weak because you you leave Europe dominated by the U.S. So uh, Chiang's in a little, little bit of trouble here. Right, but I think if he wanted to play Marshall, he should have done a last AR without first losing that influence to Truman. So I think he might decide to space after all. That's true. He did lose the one influence of Bulgaria, which normally not a big deal at all. But here could be that Bulgaria could be important. Rarely, <laughs> rarely is Bulgaria important in a game of Twilight Struggle, Indeed. but it could be important here with both players knowing that Europe is about to come out. Also, giving up Marshall after you've seen Socialist governments, which that means it could go go back if you play Marshall. Uh, kind of, yeah. Okay, he did that. <laughs> All right, he it's takes South Korea. Yeah. Just I, I like I like this play. It does make socialist weaker though, because now you don't have yeah. to protect Italy with that fourth op. Now De Gaulle still an issue for Chrome, uh, because you you know obviously De Gaulle can can st still be used to flip France, but now Italy won't be flippable. Room, those such a huge deal. I mean, he left uh, Europe underprotected like that, and he's not getting punished for, for it. In fact, he rewarded. And now I think you just event Indo Pack and take your two VPs with a chance at four, right? You don't do anything fancy sure. here. Yeah, that's what you there, do. There's, just, there's no immediate need on the board. I think you just event the war, save your two VPs, and have a chance at another couple, and then hope you draw D stall. Jiang will be holding through Norad and Independent Reds, two problematic cards for him, so good cards to, to hold through the reshuffle. And here indeed, and he will succeed on oh, the war. Damn. Saves the two VPs from Milops, get a, gets another two, and the scoreboard wow. is uh, even heading into turn three. And now Chiang will draw uh, will draw D stall, but he's also he misses out on De Gaulle, draws the scoring. Okay, so but Crown gets everything else. I mean, he gets yes. Asia, which he will dominate. He got Dico back. De Gaulle, so no assault on Europe. And East European unrest, which Could is... Could be an interesting headline here. Interesting, yes. Very nice headline. Although, it will be very hard for the USA to get this domination in Europe, I think. Uh, then again, okay, you have two places to place just two ops. Maybe that's enough. Huh. Yeah. So he's going to headline. Looks like Chiang's going to headline Europe and try and get away with it. Um, now, he did let indeed. me count up count up countries so that we so uh, Chrome with six countries and uh, Chiang with six as well. So ah. an East European unrest headline gives Chrome domination, and that should have been expected. In fact, I think yeah. this was a card that he knew or should have known that is in U.S. hand. Oh, look at this 
Kelf, careful devil, I mean, he wanted to take from Yugoslavia, but remembered about independent rights and changed it to Austria for uh, yes. independent rights to have more impact. <laughs> Indeed. Nice. Uh, nice play there from Chrome. Uh, nice, nicely done to anticipate the Europe scoring headline. Now with DEFCON at three, I think you could see... Uh, I, I, I assume we'll just see a coup into Africa here and then a D-stall on AR2, right, Zimowit? Nothing, nothing fancy about that. Yeah, we'll just go ahead. And you'll take all the inference from Yugoslavia, so no issue with independent rights. So yeah. I guess the factors, because what else? And also, the special oh, relationship right, for with Mozan. Problem Guard. For Mozan yeah. might make sense. Might be for better. For not fact. an issue. Special relationship is, though, NORAD is as well. So Chiang might be trying to double space this turn. See if he rolls something other than a one. Oh, boy. Gets a two. two. Just does get in there. <laughs> yeah, he really might have double space with these rolls. Okay, so now you know about this doll. So you start causing trouble. So... Purge to two India, one Panama, one Colombia would be my play here. Well, or that. I was hesitate to do that on principle reason because well, yes, Japan and Asia, but you hold the China card, so in fact, it doesn't really matter. Yes, with the China card in hand, that giving up U.S. Japan not as bad, but okay, oh, it goes into Mexico. Why? Not, why? Come on. I, I like threatening Venezuela here. You also give yourself the opportunity, the, the possibility of getting mill ops if, uh, if Cheong wants to coup, which I, uh, I, I doubt that he would. But I like, I like the Colombia play here. I'm a, pr I'm a pretty conservative player myself, but when I know my opponent has D-stall, the Colombia play is, is obviously strong. Yeah, that's no-brainer. Now you just allow him to D-stall with... What's the word? Ease of mind? Peace of mind? Yes, yes. So, At yeah, leisure. He can, um, and so it's a bit of a, a more efficient destall here. He can go, he can go just one into Venezuela. Oh no, come on, get your domination. Oh. Well, what happened here? I think, did you click something? It's only got small. Screen a little bit smaller. We can still see it. Okay, he does. Yes, I like I like this play. Yeah, this is your original line of thinking, Zima Witten. I five. think I think that is that is what I would do. <laughs> Which is the D style of two into Venezuela and not a lot of ops. So that could be the other reason that Chiang um, wanted to get Europe scoring out and risk that East European unrest counter is because he's going to need to take some ops out of Eastern Europe. Yes, that is true. After his D-stall. This was a gamble that didn't pay off, but this was a reasonable one. I mean, he has D-stall to play, not a lot of ops to mm, secure the influence. He's going to have to give up some of these bad cards unless, of course, Chrome uh, triggers De Gaulle, gives access to the UK, and then he can use special relationship to poke the UK. Well, UK is at six, so that's Oh, UK is at happening. six. Sorry about that. That's definitely but not happening. Not a big problem, though, since you just pay special and play everything else, except for Nora yes. that is, which is a yes. hold. Yes. So you can clearly get rid of your Yugoslavia influence here, I think, with independent reds in your hand. Exactly. It becomes less of a problem card. I don't believe we I don't believe he's filled up any of the other countries affected by independent reds. So what do you think we'll see? One Venezuela. So he, he ends up not going into Colombia. So that means Chiang can just put one into Venezuela. Certainly one Venezuela, one Chile. What what else do you like? One Definitely Brazil, one, one Nigeria. Nigeria. Not Nigeria is a must here. Yeah, not sure. Okay, with ops, what? what? One into Asia. What? The wow. hell? Okay. Weird. Get himself a little access there. Doesn't have the ops to do anything about it, and uh, Chrome holds the China card, so a bit of an empty threat there. But you know, getting some access to help to Southeast Asia is uh, is interesting, and so now he'll be able to spread okay. to Brazil. 
re uh, reaching for special relationship there, realizing that NATO is active and it's <laughs> nice to use a different card. I think that's quite wise by Jiang. And then, uh, you know, just like that, uh, the, the victory point counter was even heading into turn three. And now it is at plus 10 for blue. So um, Jiang yeah. in quite the uncomfortable spot, despite the fact that he's going to be in good shape here in South America. True, but this is okay. In, in Africa, also not that bad. No double space for you, sir. Yeah, seems the rolls are consistent. Uh, Chrome yep. rolls high. Chiang rolls. Whoa, oh, also high. Another okay. miss. <laughs> another yeah, miss. also bad. Uh, so awful it, rolls. Awful. Yep. Uh, Chiang needs to <laughs> hope that his coup doesn't get stolen next turn. Then he can coup into Africa, and Africa all sounds and... nice. And another miss. Another miss on the Korean War. Just two Algeria. Okay, maybe one Angola. Two Algeria. Yeah, okay. I like Reasonable. filling up Algeria there, evening up battlegrounds. Yeah, you are playing the goal this turn. Uh, right, he's holding the, the purge for the next turn's headlight then. That's brutal. So, going to be two ops here and another VP for Chrome getting up to 11. Will be down to ten again. Oh, sorry, to nine on account of having no mill ups. But yes. what? He's playing the perch after all. Okay. okay, so I don't understand what he was trying to achieve earlier. I mean, he's holding what? The goal? I think he maybe he'd hold Nasser. I think I'd rather hold Nasser with. Middle East not scored yet. True. Okay, so he's going to flip but Zaire that... and put one into Mexico. Oh, it's this game of chicken with holding Nasser. I mean, would you see Sadat or Middle East scoring first? Right. <laughs> okay, so a one-op play here. Not going to give up Norad, just going to probably fill Argentina. Yep, that's what is going to happen. So Chong hoping for a quick South, uh, South America scoring and then a nice coup into Africa. Well, not in that order. The opposite order. Right, because you still want to boost South America a little bit. Yep, still need to get that two more in Chile, but I, I agree with his play. It's not, not worth it to give up NORAD here with Canada at five already. So uh, smart NORAD, to hold on to that. Yes, NORAD is a universally good hold card. If you see Quagmire, you play it for free, and if you don't, you always space it. Yep. So deciding here whether to play Nasser... Yeah, you know, I don't okay. mind giving up Nasser there because you still dominate the Middle East, even right. with Nasser gone. And cool. the goal is a reasonable space card. <laughs> oh, and there's Middle East scoring. <laughs> yeah, he drew both, actually. Middle East yeah. and Sadat. <laughs> so that's, and that's actually a great play for Chrome. He'll be able to play Sadat, undo the effects of Nasser, and then score the Middle East for what looks like a, a dominant... Oh, and just as I and... say that, Middle East, uh, excuse me, Muslim <laughs> Revolution will show up in Chiang's hand, so that's going to make things easier. And a headline, actually. That's a very... Oh, actually, he has Portuguese. No, never mind. I assume Portuguese will be the headline then. Portuguese no reason. strong headline here. Well, both scoring cards are in Chrome's hand, so uh, both are... Both would be very strong headlines. Mm, right, he'll get, get just one battleground on account of Junta. He does have brush war, however, so that's, I guess that's Panama. It seems like the most obvious target, especially since he holds Panama Canal return, so he can play that first and grab a boosted Panama. If he gets a three, of course, which he yes. hasn't so far on any other role than a war. No, sorry, then a space. <laughs> Though, in my experience, this awful streak of rolls, uh, they usually stop mid-game. If you survive until turn 5 or 6, then you quite often can observe a reverse streak. Not sure, maybe there's just some bias attached to well, how I experience the game, but I've seen awful streaks lasting uh, three or four turns, but never a streak lasting the entire game. 
Yes, that so. those things have a way of evening evening themselves out. But let's let's just set the stage here. This is a crucially important turn for both players. VP count is at nine for the U.S. We've got two scoring cards in play. We've got multiple big events in hand for both players that could dramatically affect the scoring of the region. If Chrome can somehow get get off two dominations, which I don't think is going to happen, uh, he could threaten an auto victory here. But Chiang, if he's able to get those events uh, off before the scoring cards come, he could then score at least one domination, maybe two. And, and make this game a lot more interesting. So big, big cards to come here on turn four. Um, no, two dominations for the Soviets are not happening. No chance for that, especially since he doesn't know about uh, the scoring cards. Of course, he starts with Portuguese. Okay, so now, very important uh, how high the Q roll will be. If it's high, then actually Xiang might focus on Africa, since he won the bother, maybe. Okay, Ooh, it's high. Big roll. Right, Ooh, then so... again, you might might want to set up domination in Africa. Sorry, in South America. So, nuclear to Chile and... Uh, what's that? Uruguay? Seems like a reasonable play here. Yes. Right, he's using a 4 up, so I assume he's going for that. Okay, so, setting up South America domination. And... That's tricky. Do you defend that, or do you attack uh, Africa? Not a lot of free ops available here in Queensland. Yeah, he's got arms race, problem. which there's no chance he'll get off, so that's a free three ops. South African you don't want to play. De Gaulle is fine, but an empty action round, basically. Sadat is an event. Summit is obviously one up, and Socialist Governments is an empty action. And then, of course, you have the two scoring. So not a lot of flexibility here in Chrome's hand. Of course, if he saw Muslim Revolution and uh, Brush War in Chong's hand, he would dump Middle East immediately. But he doesn't know that. Um, mm. he, would happily take, he would happily take his three points before eventing Sadat. Right. You might not even have the time to do Sadat. Okay, he's making a play for Africa first guess that's reasonable, but I think you should boost Zaire if you're going to do that. Yeah. No. Okay. Right. Then again, okay, you're really banking on your opponent doesn't have uh, not having too many playable three ops. Which that's... he doesn't. Brush War is an event. Muslim Revolution, I think, is probably an event. And then five-year plan is, is you can't play that now, and, and I don't think you want to give up Norad either. But maybe you would to flip Zaire here. And you might have to. Stop That's domination. You yeah, might I, have to. Certainly, it's... that would that would be a good play from Jiang here. I mean, you could also attack this domination with a coup of a non ground, but you don't have even a good card to coup with. No, you don't want to use... Obviously, can't use Colonial. Um, and don't want to use Panama either. Yes, you have nothing play, here. Yeah. He's also looking for that double space, because he doesn't... He's certainly Colonial. You cannot give up here at all. Uh, so you're going to have to space that. Five-year plan is in hand. He's, he's, he's going to have to give up Norad eventually. So why not give it up now? He might, indeed. And that's uh, all the worse for him, since socialist governments is in the U.S. hand. One card that can help mitigate yeah. NORAD. Well, he's going to go for his war now. Whoa. Which I can't imagine this is in Africa. Okay, so okay, he, he gets a roll. That's important. But, that's good. well, Africa. I think I would dump it right now if I were yeah. Chrome with, for, for four. I don't think I'd get greedy. That's not a great hand. You don't want. I mean, to you can really try it. You can try the realigns, and if you get them, you can win the game. I mean, if, if he if, if he tries big tries for big realigns, gets and chases uh, Chong out of Angola. Yeah, I like this play. Although I am surprised that he didn't. All right, maybe he didn't have the card for it, but he allowed a presenceless South America scoring. Yeah, so 12 VPs okay. here. Middle East domination looking good for the U.S. E even after Muslim Revolution. Um, right. I think he might space now. He's going to use one. He's going to use Panama and just put the one. 
Right. Okay. And so it's just going to repair. That gives plenty of time. You place a dot now, I assume. I think you would place a dot. Not expecting Master Evolution, which no, will no. come in reply. Yes. Or at least it should. But it's not going to be a great Muslim revolution now with Chiang uh, not having any access to the western part of the Middle East. Ooh. So it's, you can take out of Iran and then I guess Egypt. But e and even filling one of those battlegrounds in response would be enough for Dominic. Oh, I see a Norad play. Norad into Iran is his plan, I guess. Or potentially Saudi Arabia? I don't nah, know. you don't do that. With Muslim in hand. Oh, yes, of course. Okay, so this is just going to get scored immediately. Another dirty surprise for him. Yes. And we are at 15. Yeah, 15 VPs. Wow, and that's got to be... That's got to be heartbreaking for Chiang to set up Muslim Revolution like that, only to have the scoring <laughs> dumped on him for three. Um, and to see 15 in blue there, that is, that is tough. Uh, right, and even Milops will be uh, gained by the U.S. I assume he'll use South African unrest for a coup. It's first, okay, maybe if he gets double space, he will settle for summit coup. That will be a reason why I think. Just giving up Muslim one revolution VP. coming out now, I, considerably weaker. Without... Yeah, but to do what? Yeah, yeah. There is no unscored region you can attack with that. Yeah, I mean, you could put a couple into Burma, I guess. You could jam Thailand yeah. with it. I mean, with, uh, that's not, none of these are great options. Of course, the China card play is not really effective here. I mean, USA might be considering that anyway. Probably not uh, an unforced play, but I wouldn't uh, lose too much sleep over it. Yeah, Influence. Okay. Two, he's going to take Iran, and he's going okay. to take Burma. Okay. A peaceful okay. move. One you can ignore, and space. Yep. Doesn't okay. get so it. He does miss the space roll, and I think we'll see a space in response from Chiang of Colonial Rearguards. Yes, indeed. Maybe he will finally hit a roll, and he misses as well. <laughs> okay, goodness. he got one brush for what every single roll other than that. What's a bummer. Oh, and in other news, Carlsen versus Nipomniachtchi game two was drawn in the World uh, Championship match in chess, of course. I was speaking out that from time to time. Oh, all right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Zimowit. And uh, interestingly, five year plan here uh, to get rid of nuclear subs, get the extra op. Hmm. Um, Not a fan, I think. So yeah, I'm a little worried. I'd be a little worried about drawing Southeast Asia or Central America, which could be game ending. Okay, yeah. And so now you're going to jam Thailand. It's actually a pretty good play given the cards in Chrome's hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pretty important for Asia domination as well, even though Asia is already scored. I guess I would settle for the goal here. I don't have to fix Europe entirely. One will do for now. Yeah, I'll leave France at three one, even though Truman's gone, and then I'd put two you put two into Thailand. Yeah, I think that's the correct play. Oh right. That's that, that's reasonable as well. Yeah, Just getting to... presence in South America. So yeah, Chrome wants to Chrome wants to win the game. Hope wants to hope South America doesn't come out and wants to win the game before Europe comes out again. Although I think maybe Guatemala is a better move. Yeah, I, I do like Guatemala because that makes uh, Central America scoring a game winner. I do like one in France, though. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, okay. you have to give up something. <laughs> yeah, yep, you do. You do, and, you, and not taking Thailand back is right. uh, that yeah. you can't, can't do that. So, okay, uh, so the U.S. scores two dominations on turn five, and there is Central America scoring. Damn. Okay. This could be, uh, and salt negotiations as well. I'm not sure if, uh, off the top of my head, if there are any VPs for the U.S. in the discard. Uh, nothing of note. Southeast Asia in Chiang's hand, uh, along with a lot of a lot of blue. This game could end on this turn, right? But you don't want to headline, or do you, into liberation theology? Hmm. 
Yeah, I think I maybe maybe Great. headline how yeah. I learned here. I don't think I'd headline ah. scoring. Good idea. Or is maybe even a, Latin American death squads. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah, that could be interesting as well. Just to stop any attack on Central and make sure you win a core in Guatemala just in case. Uh, uh, he goes for that. Asia. That's Asia. one. Okay. So one VP and Central America now is five. So if Chiang does not immediately answer, and the only answer he has he could have in hand here is to coup Guatemala. If he does not coup Guatemala, the game is is over. Even with that, it might be. Of course, he goes for a Guatemala coup. No real choice about it. And gets a nice one, huh? It's a big roll there. Okay, so. China but, into yeah. Cuba and Nicaragua. How the, okay, he's checking for Fidel. Notices that it's not here. Currently, Central scores for two. Not enough. China into Cuba and Nicaragua. If faced with Fidel, yeah, still not enough. Faced with Fidel, not enough, but at least you get the two-point uh, domination. The, then again, it. yeah, but and you can st uh, try to realign Fidel at plus yes. one. Interesting, Kennedy. Mm. So that retakes domination. So, I, boy, I don't, I don't know that I like giving up Kennedy with with a ten point or a ten. Well, which would become an eight point scoring, exactly. still out there. I don't, uh, I, and I'm far enough ahead in the other regions where I'm comfortable saying, you know what, if I don't win the game this turn, that's that's okay. So I like the two op play here better, and you force a response. Well, yeah, why wouldn't you hold two. Kennedy? I mean, I would play China card this turn. This turn, yeah. no questions yes. asked, and hold Kennedy. I agree. Whatever I, happens, I am a big fan of of holding Kennedy here. And you also have salt negotiations, so if you need to hold an additional card, you can. Exactly. You can also play salt negotiation. Well, that's it's not going to matter by then, of course. Salt negotiations could boost Defcon and and get you a couple of VPs there. Uh, so no. come on, China into Cuba and Nicaragua. If that he doesn't f have Fidel, game over. If he does, you rely at plus one. Okay, so again, uh, Chiang's only response here, only acceptable response here is either to jam Mexico or to coup Nicaragua. No, first you coup uh, when faced with control, then you jam. Yes. yes. Which, uh, of course, jamming cannot work. He has a China card. Yeah, so yes. he decided to go for Cuba, it's game over. Because Jiang just doesn't have the answer here. No Fidel, no South America. Yeah, no good events at all, and lots of bad stuff he's got to deal with. All right, and Cambridge goes, 5. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> it will show him his doom. Okay, he go, is going to coup with Ayenda. He better roll at least, at least a 2. Or the Doesn't really over. matter. Uh, the game is over either way, I expect. Yes. He has to. Grab Cuba. Yes. He has to risk it, I assume. Although he cannot know. Mm, okay, so right. now you're going to coup. Now you're going to coup Haiti. Right. You can still survive, yeah, can, maybe. Yeah, now you can coup Haiti. And that's three, three countries. Three. Uh, you have to. You're Cambridge, sadly, you don't want to use Cambridge for that, since that's a good uh, showstopper. You can stop your opponent with Cambridge as well for one action round, of course. <laughs> okay. Okay, going for so, a counter coup. Not very high. So, still, though, uh, Central America, even without control, is three points, and Kitchen Debates is two more. All uh, right. So, so I think if Chiang coups oh. back Nicaragua, which I expect he will do, well, he, he I, has would, to. I think I'd dump the scoring. I might dump the scoring for three, and then Kitchen Debates for two gets you the rest of the way. True. And in the Pakistani, another chance if in yes. some case your opponent gets FVP from somewhere. Okay. Kind of sad using CMC for this coup. At least he gets better rolls now. Yeah, I think it just might be too little too late. 
You so might... I think I might have bitch in here for to get up to get it up to seventeen. No, no, no. It's okay, he's gonna, he's gonna score it. Safe, I think. Yeah. yeah. No, you're right. Okay, three points to get it to eighteen, and then the Kitchen would win it. And I don't know that it is particularly close. Uh, what's the count? Uh, Europe think... plus one equalized by Americas. Yeah, Africa Chiang plus is gonna have to, one. He's going to go to space here, I would think. Yeah, and Asia plus some more, at least plus mm. two. Exactly plus yep. two by my count. Yep. yep. And Chiang is either spacing bear trap or he's going to self trap. Which is going uh, to be game Chrome? Yes, pretty yes, and some really unfortunate rolls early on in Asia. That one in Thailand on turn two, it particularly crippling for Chiang. Also, one in Italy. I mean, fifty-fifty of getting Europe to at least a draw throughout the early game. Yeah, so he tried that coup, and then he didn't draw socialist, and he didn't draw De Gaulle. Uh, both of which would have given, which would have given uh, Europe, uh, given him a draw in Europe, and he just he could not get either one. And then Chrome with the very smart uh, headline of East European unrest to pick up five VPs there. So just a, a well played game by Chrome. Couple of couple of tough rolls by Chiang, and uh, we and and Chrome is going to improve here to nine and one in ITSL in the first half of the season. Nice. Quite the impressive uh, impressive first <laughs> half. Yes. Uh... Flawless game by Chrome. And not really anything that Xiang could do. He's still hoping. And now he doesn't. And that is going to do it. So Chrome.